Modern Warfare 3 Year 1 is coming to a close, and that's gonna do it for me. Let's all press F to pay respects. Honestly, I'll miss this game. I had a tremendous amount of fun on it. Whether it was grinding camos or playing ranked play, I'll definitely look back at this game with a fond memory. But was it actually a good Call of Duty multiplayer experience? Or am I just tweaking? With that, let's get into all of the good things Modern Warfare 3 did throughout the year, and if you want more Call of Duty content, be sure to subscribe, it's completely free. Before we start, I will say that this is only on the multiplayer side of things, I will not be touching on anything Zombies or Warzone related. Number 1. Post launch support. One of the best things about Modern Warfare 3 was the post launch support. Specifically, the 6v6 support. The developer communication was amazing and they gave us 19 6v6 DLC maps. 19! A lot of which were actually fantastic maps. We also got 8 carry forward maps for Modern Warfare 2. That game also had some great maps, so this was awesome. Seven gunfight maps, which filtered into the very popular small map mosh pit, and 15 map variants. These were a little corny, but they were fun. We've never had this amount of 6v6 post-launch support in a Call of Duty game, and I hope this is the norm moving forward. Treyarch, it's on you now. Movement. After the year we had previously in Modern Warfare 2 where they scaled back all sense of movement and really went back to a more old school movement feel, we needed a movement update. Thankfully, Sledgehammer was able to get sliding back into the game to a point where it didn't feel useless to use. Slide cancelling made a return and it actually felt really good in this game. I was very pleased with the overall movement in this game and it felt really smooth quick, and rewarding all at the same time. Return to Roots Modern Warfare 2 2022 took away a lot of things that were staples in Call of Duty. Red dots on the minimap, dead silence as a perk, and reload cancelling, to name a few. I'm pretty sure at one point they were talking about releasing with no minimap at all, just using the compass, which would have been absolute ass. Thankfully, these all return to Modern Warfare 3 and should never leave again. I'm still so rattled about the no red dots thing. Like, I just have to laugh. Whoever made that decision at Activision or Infinity Ward needs to go sit in a corner and think about what they did. Aftermarket Parts The big gimmick this year was the introduction of aftermarket parts. These can range from simple attachments to a full-on conversion kit for your weapon. This introduced a new way to play and allowed for some fun customization to ensure the guns didn't get stale. The Renetti Jack Ferocity Kit and Jack Nightshade Kit for the DG58 LSW were some of my favorites to use. I didn't use the aftermarket parts a ton, but it was a fun addition to the game to keep it fresh and exciting. I don't think these are coming back in Black Ops 6, which is fine. I think balancing these things became super tricky after so many were added, so I'm happy to keep them in Modern Warfare 3. But overall, good addition. Camo Grind and Camos One of the most exciting things for me every year is grinding for the Mastery Camos. The Modern Warfare 3 grind felt perfect to me. It didn't feel overly grindy. I played a medium amount of COD this year, and I was able to get Interstellar early December. The base camo challenges felt in place depending on the weapon type you were using. SMGs had hipfire kills, pistols had akimbo kills, snipers had one-shot kills, everything felt on brand in terms of challenges, and I'm so thankful that the mastery challenges weren't just long-shot medals. The mastery camo unlocks were different for each class, so it felt less grindy because you weren't grinding one set of challenges over and over and over and over. Black Ops 6 is going a different route, they're actually going headshot route as the base, challenge route as the second set of camos, and then we get to do the mastery camos. I felt the Modern Warfare 3 system was actually pretty perfect, um, but we'll see what Black Ops 6 has to offer. The camos were also worth it. Priceless and Interstellar are some of my favorite camos in any Call of Duty game. 
This brings us into my next point, which is weapon prestige camos. These were released in Season 3, and every new season since they've released a new one, giving us four weapon prestige camos. One Trick, Molten Obsidian, Mercury, and Constellation's End. If this doesn't come back for Black Ops 6, it's a major missed opportunity. It just gives players that something extra to grind for. You already have all multiplayer camos done on every weapon? Time to grind for the prestige camos on every weapon. It keeps players engaged for longer, and they feel worth it in the end because they look clean. Weapon Balance Weapon balance will always be a topic of discussion in Call of Duty, no matter what. There's always going to be a select few guns that are a step above the rest. I think Modern Warfare 3 did a great job of finding that balance. I never felt at a major disadvantage using any of the weapons, and this is how it should be. There's still going to be meta setups, don't get me wrong but I didn't run into them as much as in previous COD titles. This made using every new gun that would release super fun, because you knew it would be at least somewhat competitive right off the rip. Very happy with the weapon balance in Modern Warfare 3. Maps. And when I say maps, I'm not talking about the Modern Warfare 2 2009 maps that we got at launch. We didn't need a full game with only those maps again. We've seen them before, let's leave them in the past where they belong. I'm talking about all of the other maps that we were given in season. Whoever is on the map development team needs a raise because we got some bangers. Rio, Vista, Six Star, Grime, Paris, all of these maps were great Call of Duty maps. A lot of them were versatile, they were great for pubs and great for ranked as well. It's too bad we didn't get a full year to play some of these maps. Ranked play. I'm gonna love ranked play every year it's in COD, no matter how many cheaters there are. I'll still be playing. Look, I'm not the greatest COD player. I hang out in Plat 3 and Diamond 1 lobbies. The cheating definitely doesn't affect me as much. I thought ranked play was super fun this year, especially in Season 1 and Season 2, when the player base was booming. Do they need to figure out the cheating problem? Yes. Will they? Probably not. I just try to have as much fun with ranked as I can, and I will see you all in Plat when rank drops in Black Ops 6. Seasonal Events Seasonal events are special, limited time events that bring new cosmetic rewards, weapons, and content into the game. There have been 35 seasonal events in Modern Warfare 3 during its life cycle. These can be related to anything, Call of Duty Endowment, throwback events, and anything in pop culture, from The Walking Dead to the WWE. These events come with challenges for players to complete, usually locked behind an XP wall, where if you play, you unlock cosmetics with the last unlock generally being a blueprint or a weapon camo. These events can also be much bigger, like the Santa's Playground event, where they introduce Christmas-themed map variants of Shipment and High Rise, new game modes in Snowfight and Infectious Holiday, and various map changes in Modern Warfare Zombies and Warzone. These add a little extra to play for every season, and we can get some great rewards as well. I hope these stay in the future, and I feel like they are. Small Map Mosh Pit Part of the new standard in Call of Duty is having these small, chaotic, fun maps that are all about high engagement, high kills, non-stop action. I love how these maps were all put into their own playlist so that if I ever wanted brainless Call of Duty action, I could hop right into the Small Map playlist and get some high kill games. We also had a great variety of maps in here by the end, meat being my favorite of the bunch. It's awesome that it's not just shipment anymore when I want to play a small map and want some easy camo grinding. By the looks of it, Black Ops 6 will be following suit, as most of their maps are trending on the smaller side. Either way, this was a great playlist in Modern Warfare 3. Battle Pass I feel like this was the best year in terms of quality for the Battle Pass skins, and it actually felt worth it to grind to tier 100. I'm not saying these are the best skins by any means, but in terms of regular Battle Pass skins that we've gotten the last few years, there were actually some very usable ones. I mean, we got Michael freaking Myers in the Season 6 Battle Pass. Side note, why does the Haunting event always have the best skins? Give us some of these wacky skins early on in the life cycle. On top of that, I thought all the weapons in the Battle Pass were great. I loved all the new weapons added to the game this year, and I hope Black Ops 6 can follow suit in that regard. Developer Communication Lastly, a quick note on the developer communication, I feel like Sledgehammer was always open with the updates to their game and the vision they had for their game moving forward. I love the transparency from them, and I hope this is the standard moving forward. I'm looking at you, Infinity Ward.
None of that bullshit you pulled last year. These are some of the things I liked about Modern Warfare 3. I'm sure there were lots more that other people enjoyed. So let's hear it. What was your favorite thing about Modern Warfare 3? Let me know in the comments, and if you're still here and want more Call of Duty content, make sure to subscribe.